Hello students, welcome to this uh, lecture on uh, calculus of variations. In this lecture, what we are going to uh, show here is first thing is natural boundary condition and second is uh, an example related to natural boundary condition where we can apply this type of condition. So uh, before moving on to the natural boundary condition, uh, there is uh, one rule which is uh, applied in the differentiation or in the part of the proof of the natural boundary condition that is Leibniz rule of differentiation under integral sign. Leibniz rule under of differentiation under integral sign. Suppose uh, you have a function f and uh, there are two variables x and z and you want to integrate it with respect to uh, you want to take the differentiation with respect to this z and z is here but note one more thing here the limit of the integration must be the functions itself and these should be the functions of z but it is not necessary that these should be the function sometimes these are constant and we consider these limits in such a way now the derivative of this integral with respect to z comes out to be the limit as such and you take the partial derivative of this function partial derivative of this function with respect to z dx plus what we do in this function replace this x with the upper limit you see here and write the partial derivative of upper limit with respect to z minus again you replace x by the lower limit x by the lower limit that is az z as such and the partial derivative of the lower limit with respect to z that is how we obtain the differentiation under integral sign and this is called the Leibniz rule of differentiation under integral sign right so next we are moving on to the natural boundary condition where uh, this natural boundary condition is useful and uh, why we need to study this in calculus of variation now you can see in uh, earlier in the very first lecture I told you that very first lecture I told you that in a variational problem of this type in a variational problem of this type you are given the boundary condition suppose y at a equal to capital A and uh, y at b is capital B so these limit may vary a can be 0 b can be 1 a can be 1 b can be 2 anything the limits can be anything so if boundary what is the use of these boundary conditions you know uh, ultimately when you find the solution of a variational problem you are going to have the value of a function in terms of some variable and some constants and variable in terms of variable and constant and these constants are the arbitrary constants arbitrary constants so then in order to determine value of these arbitrary constant we need to have these boundary conditions but there may be some cases that in a variational problem you are not given either one boundary condition or both the boundary condition Sometimes it will not be given, it will be given, but sometimes it will be given, it will not be given. And there may be a case, this is not given and this is not given. So in such circumstances, how to obtain the solution, uh, how to obtain these boundary conditions? So uh, this thing is, uh, these conditions are obtained in some, by some procedure and that procedure is called this uh, the conditions obtained by that procedure are called the natural boundary conditions right so uh, what happens in that situation I told you I tell you uh, you see suppose you are given this uh, optimal functional this is the actual optimal function this is why this is a and uh, and it is given by represented by this line this is the actual optimal function when you plot the graph of this now we can consider some pre-assigned function eta x we say that 
this is actual y equal to y axis actual but we are considering that eta x is pre-assigned we are assigning that and definitely this is different from this will be different from y x different from y x so in this in this way if as it is because it, it is different from y x so i don't know where it will be i can where i can draw this so in this way we take some some small number epsilon and the curve y x plus this uh, epsilon eta x is given by this line this is the curve means this is actually the approximate curve you can say approximation to y x so in such a situation earlier the boundary points were x naught y naught and x1 y1 but when we are taking this approximate curve boundary points also changes the boundary point x naught is here but y changes so y is suppose y naught plus eta x naught and here you suppose that this is y1 plus eta x1 so that is how the uh, boundary points also changes so this is the disc uh, geometrical description of the situation now how we consider this mathematically you see we assume that y x is the actual extremal as i told you and eta x uh, is pre-assigned eta x is pre-assigned uh, the integral becomes because there is change in y and that is epsilon eta basically eta is also a function of x then y dash will definitely change and it becomes eta dash x as you take the derivative of this it also we have to take the derivative of eta so that is this becomes the integral where epsilon is a real number which attains uh, ex extremum value when epsilon equal to zero you can see when epsilon equal to zero then y x becomes y that means we get the op optimal curve we get this y x that is why the optimal conditions are obtained when epsilon is zero so the condition of optimality or the maximum minima for this integral is obtained by di by d epsilon equal to zero at epsilon equal to zero now you take integral of i with respect to epsilon d by d epsilon now it becomes that situation i has explained here and leibniz rule so here this is partial derivative you can also take it total derivative dy d epsilon in our case so we'll open that according to this rule you see d by d epsilon of the integral a to b f of x comma y becomes y plus epsilon eta y dash plus uh, epsilon eta dash dx equal to zero at epsilon equal to zero now by we perform the uh, differentiation under integral sign according to the Leibniz rule how it becomes in this situation you can see uh, the parameter uh, you have to differentiate with respect to epsilon and the limits a and b are not depending on epsilon so these are not the functions of epsilon but uh, it hardly matters so you can see here uh, this is function and uh, this is another function uh, this is one variable this is another variable and this x is variable here now if you uh, according to the um, first term what we have to do as i explained in the leibniz integral what we do what we do is d curly by curly epsilon of this f of x comma y plus epsilon eta y dash plus epsilon eta dash and here this is the x integral a to b then it is uh, i told you that f of what we do we replace x with the upper limit and rest of the things are same and then we have then we have uh, this uh, curly b by curly epsilon minus again we have we replace this x by the lower limit a and rest of the things are same 
and then we have curly a by curly epsilon but you, you know this a and b are constant quantities so this uh, curly b by curly epsilon is zero and this is also zero so ultimately this whole term is zero this whole term is zero so we are left with this type of the situation now problem is that what is the value of this how to calculate the value of this so from the knowledge of the partial differentiation the value of this can be calculated in this manner suppose the whole thing is equal to this thing is let the one first variable x and the whole thing we are calling it u and this whole thing let we are calling it as v then what is the partial derivative of this the situation now becomes like this curly by curly epsilon curly by curly epsilon f of f of this x u v now how we take this derivative according to rule in the partial differentiation you differentiate it like that curly f by curly uh, curly f by curly x then curly x by curly epsilon plus curly f by curly y curly y by curly epsilon curly f by curly z and curly z by curly epsilon so in this way uh, you can see uh, this curly curly x by curly epsilon because uh, there is no epsilon in x so you can see that this thing is equal to uh, sorry not this one this thing is equal to zero now curly f by curly y is as such and curly y not y here it should be u it should be u u because here the variables are u and v this is u and this is v this is v so now what is u u is something y plus epsilon eta and when you take the differentiation it actually it becomes curly f by curly u here and then the differentiation with respect to epsilon it gives you eta and in this case curly f by curly v and it gives you uh, with respect to v it gives you the eta dash but now u curly of u curly of u means curly of this so you, you write here this thing is equal to in this case uh, what we do you write it uh, because we are taking this as a uh, function but variable is this one so you can also write it as the, the first part is zero curly f over curly y eta curly f over curly y dash and here it is eta dash so in this way uh, you can uh, write this expression you have here and now you integrate the second part of this integral by part integration by part so by uh, doing integration by part we get this expression that these three terms we will get by doing the integration by part of this second term so finally uh, we will have this type of situation here Here it may be noted that eta x does not necessarily vanish at the end points. Uh, this equation must be satisfied for all permissible values of eta x. Thus, it must vanish in particular when uh, at the when eta a or eta b equal to zero. When eta a and eta b are zero, then then from this equation, this part the, the this part comes out to be zero and we are left with this part when we are left with this part what happens now this is a function and this is a function and it and the limits are constant if this type of integral is equal to zero this can happen only with either this integ and this part function is zero or this function zero but uh, this when you take this as zero then we are getting the curve itself so we take this thing is equal to zero so this is nothing but the Euler equation means we are getting the 
Euler equation. That means yx satisfies the Euler equation. Further, when yx is the solution of Euler equation, then what do we have? We have uh, other case what we have already considered that eta eta be equal to zero then this difference is also comes out to be zero uh, in fact this is uh, um, b and this is a here this is a this is misprint here this is a right again at the end ends eta x is arbitrary this leads to the situation that this will be equal to zero as well as this is equal to zero thus these con these equations 10 and 11 are very important means 10 and 11 are called the natural boundary conditions if yx value of yx is not assigned pre-assigned at x equal to a then the boundary condition first boundary condition is obtained by this equation and if yx is not assigned at point b then the boundary condition is given by this equation so these two are called the naturally boundary conditions as i told you earlier that uh, we can have three cases either this uh, y x value of y x is given at a but not at b it is given at b but not at a and it may not be given at any of the uh, end points a and b so According to the situation, we can take one natural boundary condition or we can take both the boundary condition and both the boundary conditions will be utilized only in the situation when yx is not given at any of the endpoints. Suppose uh, here we are taking the case, let ya is a, then you have to consider this, this second boundary condition. If you are given yb at uh, y b equal to b the second condition then you take the first boundary condition and it will be better clear with the help of one example suppose i am considering here this example determine the stationary function associate stationary function means uh, the extremum extremum of this variational problem and that what is that that will be some function in terms of a variable x y as a function of x and that will involve certain arbitrary constants and those will be determined with the help of the boundary conditions so uh, there are three cases related, uh, related to this problem the first one when y at 0 the endpoints are 0 and 1 y at 0 is 0 and y at 1 is 1 this is the first uh, part of this question again you can solve the question in this way you are given y at 0 is 0 but y at 1 is not given that means you have to utilize the second boundary natural boundary condition in this case second boundary condition is given then you have to utilize the first natural boundary condition first natural boundary conditions means this one right so if no end condition are pre-assigned then in that situation you have to uh, consider both the boundary condition that is uh, uh, this one and this one curly f by curly y dash at x equal to 0 equal to 0 and here curly f by curly y dash x equal to in place of b you take 1 equal to 0 so then you can solve uh, this problem so uh, here uh, what is uh, they are given in this problem you are given that f f is equal to integral 0 to 1 y square minus 2 alpha y y dash minus 2 beta y dash dx right so uh, in this case what is f in this case what is f so f is i tell you here f is in this case is f equal to what f is y square minus 2 alpha y y dash minus 2 beta y dash this is f now there are two three cases when y at 0 is 0 and y at 1 is 1 this is given so we don't require any natural boundary condition the second case when you are given y at 0 is 0 and second condition this is not given so here you have to apply the second boundary condition what is that you you have to consider this curly f over curly y dash 
at x equal to 1 equal to 0. Now you find the value of curly f by curly y dash here. So you partially differentiate it with respect to y dash. What do you get? We get uh, minus 2 alpha y minus 2 alpha y minus 2 beta at x equal to 1 equal to 0. That is you can say that minus 2 alpha y at 1 because y is a function of x so you will write here y at 1 minus 2 beta equal to 0 consequently y at 1 comes out to be 2 goes with 2 is beta on this side minus beta by alpha so this is the second uh, boundary condition which was missing over here so in this case you can say y of 1 will be equal to minus beta by alpha similarly in the third situation if you are given y at 1 equal to 1 and y at 0 is not given not given then it will be obtained again by this situation means this uh, natural boundary condition that curly f by curly y dash at x equal to 0 at x equal to 0 equal to 0 and this will lead to uh, the situation y at 0 is equal to minus beta by alpha so you will write it here if both are not given if both the conditions are not given then you can consider both this equation this one as well as this equation so that is how uh, this natural boundary condition is helpful for the calculation of the uh, extremum of a variational problem so this is the reference here and thank you for listening